Hello everyone, this is a quick reminder before the video starts. Um, I had a few comments saying that this setup doesn't connect to different uh, computers, it doesn't work on different networks, people are getting errors. Uh, I just want to remind you of a few things that could solve your problems because a lot of people may not have changed this IP in your client's create event. You need to make sure that this IP if you're running on two different computers on the same network this needs to be the same as the internal IP address of the computer hosting so this will connect to the server appropriately now the port also needs to be the same now if you're attempting to connect on two different computers on two different networks so this would be say someone in your house and someone outside of your house say your neighbor on their Wi-Fi network you will need to port forward this port to the internal IP address of your computer hosting the server now everyone that is attempting to connect to this server will also need to port forward this port because if this port is blocked on either side so if it's blocked on the server side or it's blocked on the client side then you won't be able to connect so keep that in mind now this setup I have here 127.0.0.1 is this computer that I'm running the project on this literally returns my home IP address so if I'm hosting the server on this computer and if I'm connecting to the IP address of this computer then it's going to work but if I type in anything different right here and attempt to host the server on my network it won't work now a way to get around this uh, is to create a, a public server or if you want input then you just need to say that IP equals get string and here you can have the user of the game decide which IP address or port they wish to connect to now remember the IP is a string the port is a real number so hopefully that helps a few of you guys with your problems hello everyone and welcome back today is part four of making an online multiplayer game in game maker studio 2 they will be making this where we have join messages for who has joined the game we have latency and we also have this connection so if I leave on one player they leave on everyone's screen and it also removes them from the server so let's go ahead and get into this now where we left off last time was just shooting in chat so there's a few things we need to do in our client uh, to set up how we're gonna disconnect everyone and also setting up a few timeout variables so here I set up two variables for latency and timeout and they're both set to zero now in the step then we have to create a new enum in our network called latency or ping whatever you'd like and we have to send a packet to the server containing the current time and then we go ahead and send that to the server now here we increment timeout so that if this timeout is greater than three seconds which is our room speed set to 60 times 3 then we're going to use a script called disconnect and return to the menu now before I move to this disconnect script I'm gonna go ahead and go to the server when they receive the latency packet so in our server data script I have a region for latency and here we simply read the time create a new buffer write the time to it make sure to send that latency packet ID and we send that uh, back to the client that sent it to us so how we do that 
is we create a variable up here called socket. Now, this is different from when they join the server. So if we go into our server, async networking. Now, here when we load the socket, we just say async load socket, but you can't do that inside uh, of whenever you're reading the, the packet itself. You have to use async load ID. ID will return the socket. So now if we go ahead and send this packet back to that socket, only that client will get this, this packet. So when that client receives that packet, what we have to do is we have to set a new variable. I just called it got time equal to uh, what we're reading from the packet, which is the time that was sent previously. Now to get the latency, you're just going to take the current time minus the time that was sent to us. And we want to make sure we reset the timeout because we're still connected to the server. We're still receiving this packet. Now if we didn't receive this packet for quite some time, our timeout variable will begin to increase. Now remember what happens when that hits three seconds. We're going to use that disconnect script. Now when we disconnect, we're just going to check to see if our client exists and check to see if the player that our client created exists. Then we're going to create a new buffer to send the disconnect network enum and we're also going to send our client's players instance ID or their their identifier ID not the instance ID and then we're going to go ahead and send this back to the server using the client buffer now if no player was found I just show an error message and if no client was found we just show an error message but we should never get those uh, unless something really major has gone wrong so now that the client has sent that script the server needs to receive it so in our server data script in the disconnect region I read the ID that is being sent and then we need to go ahead and send this in a new buffer back to all of the clients connected to the server and we also need to remove that player that is disconnecting from the list so in order to do that we use the socket again in order to retrieve the uh, value from the list of that player disconnecting and then we go ahead and just remove that socket from that list so now when this is sent back to the client remember the person who is disconnecting is also still receiving this and when they receive this we need to say uh, we need to store the ID that we're reading into a new variable and then we need to find the instance ID that corresponds to that ID that was sent to us and how we do this is we use that map we created to keep track of all the instances connected on the client side and we find the value associated with the disconnect ID and that should return the instance ID of the player that is trying to disconnect now as long as this ID that's trying to disconnect isn't us and if that disconnecting player actually still exists then we need to go ahead and say with that player instance destroy now on everyone's screen that should that should destroy that player because remember this ID is the same for everyone now we need to also say um, in the chat list this is just like sending and receiving a chat message we're just going to add to our current client side you don't send this to anyone because remember we're, everyone's getting this disconnect packet whenever this person disconnects so we just add this to everyone's personal chat list that they have disconnected and remember you don't have to use the ID when they join or leave a game you simply just have to uh, create a new variable uh, getting an input for a string and you could send that name with the uh, join packet up here which we'll go, go over next and otherwise if this disconnection ID does 
equal RID. So if we are the one disconnecting, then we need to go to our menu room. And that's it for the disconnection. So now whenever we join the game, here we send a packet to the server right as we create the player up here. And we just send a join buffer using the network join enum. And we're sending the ID of our client, which is equal to the player's ID. So we're sending the ID and the instance ID here to the server. And then we go ahead and delete that buffer. Now when the server receives that, we're simply going to read the data that was sent to us in the corresponding manner, add to the server instances which ID or which instance is being connected. So we add the ID as well as the instance ID. And then we need to create a new buffer to send this information back to the clients. However, we're not sending both of these. We simply just need to send the client's ID. So we loop through the list of all the players connected and send that packet and then we go ahead and delete the buffer afterwards. Now when the clients receive this package, all we need to do uh, to have a join message is simply read the ID or the name that you sent as a string or either a real number and we can add to our personal chat that that certain ID has joined the game. And that is pretty much all you need to do for this episode. Um, and then to draw the latency if you'd like you just use string latency. And you could do a lot with the latency because that is essentially keeping track of that current client that's connected to the server. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you think I left anything out let me know in the comments and also if you have any questions make sure you leave them down below as well. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.